Hey, it's Howie. Hi guys. Today I learned a lot about the renal function, anatomy and physiology um, for our advanced anatomy and physiology class. Um, it's all about the kidneys and the kidneys do a lot of things. Of course, one of the number one things it does is do filtration and it does balance. So a lot of, lot of balance. And because of that balance, the body needs to be able to circulate a lot of blood into the kidneys. And of course, along with any other parts of the body, there's always some form of damage and that can almost always be from um, an involvement with cancer. Actually, that's not almost always, but there's a lot of cancer involved. Um, of course, there's also infection. We talked a little bit about how the difference between the genders um, affect an infection, um, specifically for a UTI, which is a urinary tract infection. Many times women are more infected than men, uh, just um, because of their shorter urethra. Um, but men also get urinary tract infection, and when they do, it becomes pretty significant. Um, and then we had our uh, pharmacology professor talk to us about how to treat people uh, with urinary tract infections, because you're going to see a lot of those. Um, of course, there's antibiotics that are involved, but you also have to be able to determine whether or not it's a regular bladder infection, a urinary tract infection, or a cystitis, um, which is uh, something underlying more than just a regular infection to the urethra. Um, there's, of course, numerous uh, biological defenses that the body has against um, uh, invasions uh, within the urethra, but of course, as you get older and you have a, a, a catheter, you're pretty much just opening yourself up to an infection. So you almost always will get an infection if you have to have a catheter in the hospital or wherever else you're going to have a Foley catheter, but, you know, that's kind of odd. <laughs> but Foley catheters are given to a lot of patients who are not able to walk. Um, who are not able to get to the bathroom or are, are wildly incontinent. It's not given for convenience, but for necessity. However, because it's given for necessity, it does, like I said, open you up to a lot of infections. And uh, it is our job to figure out what's causing that infection and to be able to treat it. Um, one of the suggestions is to use a bactericidal, like a fluoroquinone. Uh, I'm not sorry, not bactericidal, but a bacteriostatic agent because you don't want to be able to open up the patient to any um, uh, antibiotic resistance. So you just want to stick with a more milder but still effective, if not just a little bit slower, antibiotics that are uh, bacteriostatic, which means that they kill off the bacteria, um, or but they, they stop the bacteria from doing its job or from reproducing and then eventually kills off, um, rather than killing the bacteria outright. Um, because if you do, if you, just, if you use a bacteriocidal, then if, even if you do eradicate um, the infection, it still leaves a lot of huge, more, much more stronger infections and it leaves that to proliferate. Um, oddly enough, there's also a lot of streptococcus, I think it was, but E. coli is the number one inv inv you know, invading pathogen. Um, what else did I learn today? Yeah, I'm really trying to do this whole like, you know, after class thing so I can just remember what I learned today um, by talking to you about it. Um, what else? What else? Uh, yeah, um, so before all that, then you have to talk about the kidney anatomy and of course there's the, um, the cortex where the glomeruli are and the Bowman's capsule and they do a lot of the filtration. Once that happens and it goes into the, the ducts, the collecting ducts, and that's connected to the major and the minor calyx over to the renal pelvis, which goes into the ureters, the bladder, and then you, through your urethra. Um, uh, of course, the kidney does a lot of things too. It does. Um, it affects every single part of the body. Um, it not only produces erythropoietin for blood cells, but it also um, activates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which I got to talk to my professor about because I'm not sure exactly if it's just renin that it secretes, because I thought the liver secretes renin and then the kidney um, secretes aldosterone, not the other way around, but let me check up on that. Um, and then after that, uh, so RAS system, filtration, oh so the RAS system, I call it the raise system because it basically just raises your blood pressure and it does that in a couple of different ways. So like I said, if the body from the juxtoglomerular cells uh, near the Bowman's capsule and the nephron um, senses that there's not enough body fluid in the body, then it releases the renin hormone which sets off the aldosterone and then the angiotensin and then from the lungs and um, the heart, um, the angiotensin converting enzyme um, turns the angiotensin 1, um, angiotensinogen 1, to an angiotensinogen 2. Um, and then that itself is the main 
hormone uh, that releases um, signals for the body to constrict its, its smooth muscles so that it could raise the blood pressure. And it also signals the body to maintain sodium and to reabsorb it back into the body so that water can stay. Um, whereas, because you know, water follows sodium, so if you're losing um, liquids and fluids in the body or your body perceives that you are, then you're keeping that sodium um, via the angiotensin 2. But there's a bad part of that, and that, of course, is that it raises your blood pressure. Um, that could be good if you have a volemic and you're not, you know, dehydrated or you, you've lost a lot of blood. However, in everyday life, if your blood pressure continues to stay high, then it, can, it creates damage into your body. You know, it destroys many of your um, um, uh, vascularity, you know, like your blood vessels. Um, it opens it up to a lot of damage and then a constant constricting and inflammation will of course make you more vulnerable to stuff like cancer um, and then if you already have atherosclerosis which is a thickening uh, and hardening of your um, blood vessels then you might get an obstruction and if that depending on what part of the body that is you can have an embolus a thrombus become an embolus you have to get it in your head and get a stroke or a mini stroke or you can have it in your heart and you can get a heart attack um, also more specifically known as a myocardial, myocardial infection. But back to the kidneys. Um, what else? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, there's also the problem of kidney stones. Um, there's different types. Uh, most often, that uh, because the kidney depends on the balance, I, the kidney balances the body's acidity. So in chemical terms, pH of less than 7 is acidic, and then pH of greater than 7 is alkal alkalotic and so if your body is uh, more acidic then depending on your genetics and your diet uh, then you will most likely get um, a uric acid stone um, whereas if your body is more alkalitic then you will have uh, you may be more vulnerable to a cystic like a calcium stone um, and then of that let me get back to that. But calcium oxalate is um, uh, the most predominant kidney stone. I'm pretty sure it's part of the calcium phosphates. And it depends on how large it is. If the, if the kidney stone is larger than one centimeter, uh, then you're kind of looking into some trouble. Whereas if it's at least, or at least less than half a centimeter, then you may have a 50% chance of passing it, which is extremely painful. Um, it's been said that uh, it's like giving birth to a baby because there's that crystallized uh, sediment that's ripping through your entire, not only through your kidneys, but down your ureters, then it's, it's bouncing around your bladder and then trying to go through the urethra. It's awful. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're going to see a patient and they find out that they have hematuria well, without any infection, then start thinking kidney stones maybe. Um, what else? Um, all right, that's about what I've got spewed out of my brain for today. I'm pretty tapped out, but um, hopefully that'll be a decent review. Okay, I hope it was kind of useful. Sorry if I gave out any false information. Um, please feel free to mention in the comments if I said anything wrong. I would really, really appreciate it because that would help me as well make sure that I got my facts straight. Okay, all right, guys. Thanks a lot. Um, this is Howie from Nurse Practitioner School. See you later.